Hello and welcome to Skitty Animates. I'm Skitty and today I thought I'd do a more casual type video. The video that I'm currently working on for you guys is taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about something that I've been meaning to for a while now, which is overacting. Overacting is something that animators really struggle with when they're starting out, but it's not something that ever really goes away. You always have to be conscious of what you're doing. What I find a lot of beginning animators struggle with, and I was definitely in this boat as well, is when you get a shot, a lot of people think that in order to make the shot better, they have to have these big grand actions in their poses. So basically what I want to tell you guys today is less is more. If you think about humans in real life, we're pretty lazy. We don't really want to put a lot of effort into what we're doing. Taking our arms above chest level, it takes effort. It's not something that we want to do. So 95% of the time we're going to leave our hands down. What I've noticed that a lot of beginners do is they bring the hands up like this in a weighing air pose. Some people call it a W pose and there's many many reasons why this pose looks bad. To keep it simple, asymmetry is best and when you have two hands doing the same thing like this it just reads as not being a human, but also it just screams, I didn't know what to do with the hands. When people get called out on this, what they'll do is they'll take one hand down and put it on the hip and leave the other hand up, but that's a teapot pose, and once you know that that looks like a teapot, you're never gonna be able to look at that pose right again. If you only take one thing away from this video, let it be keep the hands down if you don't need them. If there's no purpose to use your hands, don't use your hands. We might take the fingers and go like this once in a while, but still keep that down low where the hands would naturally hang. Human emotion is pretty mild 95% of the time. So if during that 95% of the time you have these big grand actions, it's gonna make no impact during that 5% when the character finally reaches that breaking point and they have their sudden outburst, that's going to mean absolutely nothing because they've been dialed to 11 this whole time already. A lot of people use the weighing air pose for a shrug as well, which doesn't make much sense because when humans shrug, we're just going to go... I don't know. We're not going to take our hands and go, I don't know, unless that's what the show calls for. It's a very cartoony styled show. You might do that, but also keep in mind that if you're doing a cartoon show for kids, kids aren't dumb. They're still going to pick up on the subtle things. They will notice if something is more exaggerated than real life. So doing this still might not be what's called for. To put it more into context, if someone's going to ask where the washroom was, are they going to act like this? Excuse me, sir, where's the washroom? Or are they gonna act like this? Excuse me, sir, where art thine toilet? Again, in a very cartoony style show, that second one might be what is called for. 99% of the time, that's not what you're going for at all. And if you're not working on the project by yourself, if you're with a team of people, you have to keep in mind how they're going to be animating their shots as well. If you're trying to make yours stand out and be this big grand thing, it's not gonna work in the context. Now, I'm no expert, but I have a couple tips that I keep in mind when I'm animating that I'd like to pass off to you, so maybe they could help you out. First, you need to believe that your shot is real. You have to think about who's in the shot and what are they thinking and what are they feeling? Because if you don't believe that your shot is real, then no one else is gonna believe that it's real. And if no one believes that it's real, they're not gonna connect with it the way that you want them to. The whole point of your animation is for the audience to have a connection with what they're seeing on the screen, which is a big job. But if you don't believe it's real, why should they? The next thing to do, reference. I talk about this all the time because it's just so important. If you record yourself doing the action that your character is going to be doing, you're going to see what your arms do. And if it's a talking shot, they're not going to do very much. I'll create a video in the future on how to properly create your reference, but I have done a video in the past on how to apply a reference to your animation. So I'll link that up here somewhere if you want to check that one out. The next thing is to really study the dialogue in your shot. You're not just listening to the words that are being said, you're listening to the beat of which they say it. You're listening to what they're feeling. You're listening to how they project themselves. All of this can be found in their voice. You have to remember that your character is a person or whatever type of creature they are. We're constantly thinking, so what is your character thinking about? Are they hyper-focused on what they're talking about? Or are they actually just thinking about how many dishes they have to do when they get home? Think about what kind of environment they're in. Is it really hot out? What's the weather like? Is it 
it raining? Are they out in the rain? Do they hate the rain or do they love it? Which leads into the next thing, which is to add a layer to your animation. And I don't mean an actual animation layer. I mean, yes, they're talking to you, but add a subplot. What else could be going on in their lives? If the character is just walking home from school, what else could you add to that? Are they excited to run home from school because their favorite show is going to be on TV? Are they scuffing their feet because they don't want to get home because they know they have homework to do? There's so much more that you can do within a shot other than character walks home from school, which will just give it so much more life and it'll make it unique and it'll just make it interesting for everyone watching. Another thing to do is to avoid pantomiming. So this would be, it's time to go. Avoid stuff like that. No one does this in real life in a serious sense. And lastly, poses are thoughts not words. So even though you're going to be listening to the rhythm of the dialogue being said, the beat of your dialogue is going to indicate shifts but not a pose shift. The beat is for your ups and your downs. And unless a character's doing something like rambling, then you're going to want a pose to last for a whole thought shifting in the pose, but staying in that relative pose. If the character has a similar thought, like a realization or something, then you could go from this to, wait a minute, but you still want to hold within that pose because it's the same general idea. Moving a character around a screen and utilizing the space is really nice. When people are overacting, they tend to look like characters moving to the next piece of tape. If you're having trouble with overacting, or at least you think you do, then why not try animating a voice clip and not touching the arms at all? Push them down so that they're not in T-pose, but just leave them at the character's side, in their pockets, frost, whatever, the entirety of the dialogue. We may be expressive creatures, but we don't like to use these. So to iterate, humans are mine. 95% of the time. Keep it subtle until you want your character to do that big pop so that it actually has an impact on your audience. Believe that your character is real so that the audience believes that they're real. Think about what they might be thinking and run with it. Act it out yourself and use a subplot. Don't go weighing air and no more teapot poses. And that's where I'm gonna leave the video for today. I know that this wasn't a conventional type video. If you like this format at all for the smaller topics, let me know in the comments below and I'll make some more. Also leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand and want me to elaborate on. Like and subscribe if you learned something. Links to socials are in the description and remember to always use a reference.